courtiers, the Horium Ghostman, the yellow wallpaper. It is very seldom, seldom, that me or only people like John and myself secure after halls for the summer. Colonial mansion, heritage state. I should say a haunted house and reach the height romantic facility, but that would be asking too much of fate. Else, why should it be let so cheaply, and why have stood so long untenanted? John laughs at me, of course, but one expects that in marriage. John is practical and extreme. He has no patience with faith and intense horror of superstition. He scoffs openly of any talk of things not to be felt and seen, and put it down in figures. John is a physician, and perhaps I would not say in a living, to a living soul, of course, but this is dead paper, and great relief is in my, to my mind. Perhaps this is one reason I do not get well faster. You see, he does not believe I am sick. And what can one do? Physician of hand standing and one's own husband. Sure, friends and relatives, there is really nothing the matter with one but temporary nervous depression, a slight hysterical tendency. What is one to do? My brother is also a physician and also high standing. He says the same thing. So I take the phosphates and the phosphates, whatever it is, the tonics and the journeys and air and exercise, and unfortunately forbidden to work until I do, I am well again. Personally, I disagree with their ideas. Personally, I believe a conjugal work with excitement and change would do me good. Well, what is one to do? I did right for a while, in spite of them, but it does exhaust me a good deal. Having to do be so sly about it, or else meet with heavy opposition. I sometimes fancy that in my condition, if I had less opposition and more society and stimulus. But John says that the worst thing I can do is to think about my condition. He confess it may always make me feel bad. So I will let it alone and talk about the house. In the removable place is quite alone, standing well back for the road. Quite three miles from the village, it t- takes me, makes me think of English places that read about. For the, uh, there are hedges and walls and gates that lock, and good lots of separate little houses for gardeners and people. This is a delirious, gu- delicious garden. I never saw such a garden, large and shabby, full of box bordered paths and lined with grape covered arbors with seats under them. They are greenhouses, too. They're all broken now. There was some legal trouble, I believe. Something about the heirs and the co heirs. Anyhow, the place has been empty for years. I suppose my ghostlessness. I'm afraid, but I don't care. There's something strange about the house. I can feel it. I said so to John on the one moonlit evening. But he said I felt I was, what I felt was a draft and shut the window. I felt uncomfortably, visibly angry with John sometimes. I'm sure I should never use to be so sensitive. I think it's due to his nervous condition. But John says, I f- if I feel so, I should neglect proper self-control. I take pains to control myself, before him at least. That makes me f- very tired. I don't like our room a bit. I want it one, wanted one downstairs, open on the plaza, and roses all the window, pretty... Such pretty old-fashioned cheeses hanging, but John would not hear of it. He said there's only one window and not room for two beds. No only room for him if he took another. He's very careful and loving, and hardly lets me stir without a special direction. I have a scheduled project prescription for every each hour of the day. He takes all care of me. And so I feel basically ungrateful, gratified for not to value it more. He said he came here solely for on my account that I have the perfect rest and all the air I can get could get. Where he says it spends on your health strength, my dear, said he. Your food somewhat on your appetite, but the air you can absorb all the time. So he took the mis- nursery at the top of the state house. It's big, airy room, a whole floor nearly with the windows that look all ways, and air and sunshine galore. It's nursery first, then a playroom, a gymnasium, 
Should church for the windows are barred for little children. There are rings and things in the walls. The paint and paper looks as if boys' school had used it. It's stripped off the paper. Great patches all round the head of my bed. About as far as I can reach in a great place. On the other side of the room, low down, I never saw a worse paper in my life. Well, those sprawling frambolent patterns committing every artistic sin. It's dull enough to confuse the eye. It's following pronounced enough to constantly irritate and provoke. Study when you follow the lame and certain curves of a little distance, but suddenly commit suicide, plunge of an outrageous angle, destroy themselves in unheard of contradictions. The colour is repentant, repellent, almost revolting, a smothering, unclean yellow, strangely faded by slow turning sunlight. Is it dull yet lurid orange in some places, a stickly sulphur tint in others? No wonder the children hated it. I should hate it myself. I had to live in this place long, this room long. There comes John. I must put this away. He hates to have me write a word. I have been here two weeks. I haven't felt like writing before since that first day. I'm sitting in a window now, by the window now. Up in a torturous nursery, there is nothing to hinder my writing as much as I please. Slack, save lack of strength. John is away all day, even some nights when his case is serious. I'm glad my case is not serious, but the nervous troubles are dreadfully depressing. John does not know how much I really suffer. He knows there is no reason to suffer, and that satisfies him. Of course, he's only nervousness. If it does weigh on me, or to, so not. To do so, not to do my duty in any way. I mean, it's such a help to John, such a real rest and comfort. Here I am, comparatively burdened already. Nobody would believe what an effort it is to do, what a little thing I, what a little thing I'm able to to, to, to dress and entertain. I've ordered things. It's fortunate Mary's so good with the baby, such a dear baby. Yet I cannot be with him. It makes me, it makes me so nervous. Po, po, suppose John never was nervous in his life. He lies at me so much, so about the, this wallpaper. First he meant to paper the room. But he afterwards he said I was letting, letting it get the better of me. And nothing was worse than nervous patient than to give way to such fancies. He said that after the wallpaper was changed, it would be the heavy red set. Then the barrel of windows, then the gate at the head of the stairs, and so on. You know, the place is good, doing you good, he said. Really, dear, I don't care to revenate the house just for three months' rental. Let's just get, get, let's, then do let us go downstairs, I said. There are much prettier rooms here, there. When he took me in his arms and called me a blessed little goose, I said he, he could go down to the cellar if he wished. I have, I have it whitewashed into the bar, bargain. But you write enough about the beds and windows and things. It's airy and comfortable room, as anyone would wish. I, of course, I would not be silly to make him uncomfortable, just for whim. I'm getting quite fond of this room, all but that horrid paper. One of the window, out of one window we can see a green garden, spurious deep shaded with boards and riotous old-fashioned flowers and brushes, bushes and gay granani trees. Have another, I get a lovely view of the bay. A little private wolf belonging to the estate. It's a beautiful shaded lane and runs down there on the house. Always fancy I see people walking in. There's numerous paths and arbors. But John was cautioning me not to give way to fancy in the least. He says, in my imagined power, the habit of story making, a nervous re- weakness like mine is sure to lead to all manifest sighted fancies. I ought to use my will and good sense to check the tendency. So I try. I think sometimes that if I were well enough to write a little, it would relieve the press of ideas of rest me. I did, I did, but I find I get pretty tired when I try. So discouraging not to have my advice and companionship about my work. I get really well, John says he will ask Cousin Henry and Julia down for a long visit. He says he would as soon put the fireworks in my filler case to let, let me have a similar page about assimilating people about now. I wish I could get well faster. But I must not think about that. 
The paper looks to me as if they knew what a vicious influence it had. There is a very recurrent spot where the pattern lulls like a broken neck. Two brothers' eyes stare at you upside down. I get positively angry and pertinence of it everlastingness up and down and sideways you call those absurd and blinking eyes are everywhere. There is one place where two breaths don't match and the eyes go all up and down the line one is a little higher than the other. I never saw so much expression in an animate thing before. We all knew how much expression they have. I used to lie awake as a child and get more entertainment and terror out of blank walls, plain furniture than most children could find in toy store. I remember what a cunning kind of wink the knobs of a big old bureau used to have. There was no there was one chair. It always seemed like a strong friend. I used to feel if any of the other things looked too fierce, I could always hop on that chair into that chair and be safe. The furniture in this room is no worse than in harmonious. However for we had to bring it all from downstairs, I suppose. When this was used as a playroom, it had to be taken Take the nursery things out. I wonder I never saw such ravages as the children have made here. The wallpaper, as I said before, is torn off in spots. It's strict, it's closer. Then my the brother, they must have the preserver for servants as well as hatred. Then the floor is scratched and gouged and splintered. The past itself is dug out here and there. This great heavy bed, which we all, which is all we found in the room, looks as if it had been through the walls. But I don't mind it a bit, only the paper. There comes John's sister, such a dear girl as she is, so careful to me. I must not let her find me writing. She is perfect and enthusiastic housekeeper, hopes no, for no better profession, a verily believe she thinks it is a writing and makes which made me sick i can write when she's out and see her a long way off from these windows there is one that commands the road a long shady riding road one that thus looks over, over the country a lovely country too for the great elms and violet meadows the wallpaper is kind of sub pattern in different slade particularly irritating one but you can only see in certain lights, not clearly then. But in places where it isn't faded, and where the sun is just so, I can see a strange, provoking, formless sort of figure. It seems to sulk about behind this silly, compitious front design. It sisters on the stairs. Well, the fourth of July is over. People all gone and tired out. John thought it might be a good idea to see a little company. So he just had a little mother and Nelly and the children down for a week. Of course, didn't do a thing. Denny sees to everything now. But it tied me all the same. John says, if I don't pick up faster, he will just send me to William Ifshaw in the fall. But I don't want to go there at all. I had a friend who was in his hands once. And she says, it's just like John and my brother, only more so. Besides, such undertakings to go so far. I don't feel as if it was worth while to turn my hand over to anything, I'm getting dreadfully fretful and querulous. I try and nothing and cry most of the time. Of course, I don't. Don't when John's here or anybody else, but when I'm alone, and I am alone a good deal just now. John is kept in town very often by serious cases, and Jenny is good and lets me alone when I want her to. So I walk in a little. So I walk a little in the garden, down the lonely lane, sit on the porch under the roses, lie down up here a good deal. I'm getting, really getting fond of the room, in spite of the wallpaper, perhaps because of the wallpaper. It dwells in my mind so. I lie here on this great immovable bed. It's now down, I believe. I follow the pattern about by the hour. It is good as gymnastics, I assure you. I start, we say, at the bottom, down the corner. Over there, is the way, where... Has not been touched, I determine, for the furthest time that I will follow the pointless pattern to the sole port of conclusion. I know little of the principal design, and that this thing was not arranged on any laws of radiation, alternative or repetition, or symmetry, or anything else that I ever heard of. 
is repeated, of course, by breaths, but not but not otherwise. Looking at me, looking at one way, each breath stands alone, bloody curves and flourishes. Kindly base Romanics with delirium terrenumiums go rolling down and down in isolated columns of fed, fed unity. But on the other hand, they connect, they connect diagonally as sprawling outlines run in great slanting waves, optic horror. Like a lot of swallowing seaweeds in final chase. The whole thing goes hysterically. Too, it seems, at least it seems so. I thought myself in trying to distinguish the order it's going in that direction. They have you, they have used a horizontal breath for a freeze. It adds wonderfully to the confusion. In one end of the room, it's almost intact. There, where the cross lights fade and the low sun shines, Directly upon it, I almost fancy radiation after all. The interminable grotesque film to form around a central common center rush off a headlong plunges of equal distraction. It makes me feel tired to follow it. I will ver- take a nap, I guess. I don't know why I should write this. I don't want to. I don't feel able. I know John would think oh, it's absurd. But say I would feel what I feel, I think in some way, it's such a relief. But the effort get, getting to be greater than a relief. All the time I'm awfully lazy, lying down ever so much. John says I mustn't lose my strength. Has me take cod liver oil, lots of tonics and things, to say nothing of ale and wine and rare meat. Dear John, he loves me very, very dearly, and hates to make me sick. I try to have a... We were on his reasonable talk with him the other day. Tell him how I wish he would let me go and make a visit to Cousin Henry and Julia. But he said I wouldn't be able to go or able to stand it after I got there. I did not make, I, and I did not make out a very good case for myself for his crime before I had finished. Getting to be a great effort for me to think straight. Just his nervous weakness, I suppose. And dear John gathered me up in his arms and just carried me upstairs and laid me on the bed. I sat by me and read me to me until we uh, tired my head. He said I was his darling, his comfort, and all he had, and I must take care of myself for his sake and keep well. He says no one but himself will c- help me out of it. But myself will help me out of it. I must use my will and self-control, not let many silly fancies run away with me. That's well, there's one comfort, the baby's well and happy. Does not have to accompany by his nursery, the horrid new wallpaper. If he had not used it, the, the blessed child would have, would have fortunately escaped. Why I wouldn't have a child of mine, precious little thing, live in such a realm of worlds. Never thought it would before, but it's lucky that John kept me here after all. Can stand it so much easier when a baby, than a baby. You see, of course, I never mentioned it to them any more. I'm too wise, but I keep watch of it all the same. If things in that paper nobody knows but me, or ever will. Your eye in the outside pattern of dim shapes gets clearer every day. It's always the same shape, only very numerous. It's just like a woman swooping down, creeping just behind the pattern. I don't like it a bit. I wonder, I begin to think, which John would take me away from here? So hard to talk with John about my case, because he's so wise and because he loves me so. But I'm tired it last night in moonlight. The moon shines in all around just as the sun goes. I hate it to see it sometimes. Creeps so slowly, always comes in by some one window or another. John was asleep. I hated to wake him up. So I felt kept still and waited the moonlight on the old dilating wallpaper till it felt creepy. The fate figure behind seemed to take shake the pattern just as he wanted to get out. I got up softly and went to feel and see the paper did move. When I came back, John was awake. What is it, little girl, he said. Don't go waking waking about like that. You'll get a cold. I thought it, that it was a good time to talk, so I told him what I really was not gaining here. I wish that we could take me away. Why, darling, he said. Oh, you should be up in three weeks. I can't see how to leave before. 
The prayers are not done at home. I cannot leave the town just now. Of course, if you are in danger, I could and would. We really are better, dear. Whether you see it or not, I'm a doctor, dear. I know. You're getting fresh and colour. Your appetite is better. I can really feel, I really feel much easier about you. I don't weigh him. Don't weigh a bit more, said I. Nor, uh, not as much of my appetite may be better in the evening when you are in here. It's worse in the morning when you're away. Bless my little heart, he said with a big hug. You should be sick as you phases. But how? Let's improve the shining hours by going to sleep and talk about it in the morning. And you won't go away, I gasped gloomily. Why, how can I, my dear? In only three weeks more, and we will take a nice little trip. A few days while Jenny's getting the house ready. Really, dear, you you are better. But it's been body, perhaps, I began, and stopped short. But he sat up straight and looked at me with such a stern, reproachful look. I could not say another word. My darling, he said, I beg you for my sake and your, for your child's sake. And for your own sake. You, but you'll never for once since let the idea enter your mind. There's nothing so dangerous, fascinating to a temperament like yours. It's false and foolish fancy. Can you not trust me as a physician when I tell you so? Of, so, of course, I said no more on that score. He went to sleep before long. He thought I was asleep first. I wasn't. Lay there for hours, trying to decide whether the front pattern and back pattern really did move together or separately. On a pattern like this, by daylight, the lack of sequence, the defiance of law, is constant irritation to a normal mind. Your colour is hideous enough and unreliable enough, irritating enough, but the pattern is torturing. You think you should you, you have mastered it, but just as you were well on the way in following, it turns a black somersault, and there you are, it slaps you in the face, knocks you down, trembles upon you. It's just, it's like a bad dream. The outside patterns of Floyd S. Abbott School remind him one of fungus. You can imagine a toadstool in joints of mint, mintable string as toadstools budding and sprouting in endless convulsions. Why? That is something like it. That is, that is sometimes. There's one marked peculiarity about this paper, a thing. Nobody seems to notice by myself. It changes and the light changes. When the sun comes and shoots in through the east window, I always watch for the first long straight ray. It catches so quickly, I never can quite believe it. That is why I wa- watch it always by moonlight. The moon shines all night. When there is a moon, I don't know. It, it, we wouldn't know it was the same paper. A night of any kind of light, a twilight, candlelight, limelight, or worse of all moonlight. It comes, it's behind, comes bars. The outside pattern, I mean, a world and behind it is plain as can be. I didn't realize for a long time what the thing was, the show behind that dim sub pattern. I know, I know, I am quite sure it is a woman. By daylight, she's subdued, quiet. I fancy the pattern that she keeps her so still, puzzling. So puzzling, it keeps me mind quiet by the hour. I lie down ever so much now. John says it's good for me. I start to sleep all you can. Indeed, he started to have it of making me lie down now each for after, after each meal. Very bad habit, I am convinced, you see. I don't sleep. That covers the seat. I don't tell him that I am awake. Oh, no. In fact, I am getting a little afraid of John. He seems very queer sometimes, and even Jenny has an inexplicable look. It makes me occasionally just as a scientific hypothesis. Perhaps it's a paper. I have watched John when he does not know I was looking, and come into the room suddenly in the most instant excuses. I caught him several times looking at the paper, and Jenny too. I caught Jenny with her well, hand at one, on it once. She didn't know I was in the room, and when I asked a quiet, a very quiet voice, Almost in a strange manner possible. What she was doing with the paper? She turned around as if she had been caught stealing and looked quite angry. Asked me why I should frighten her so. Then she said that the paper stained everything it touched. She had found yellow smooches on my clothes and John's. She wished we could, would be more careful. Did I not do, but did not that sound innocent? I know she was cutting the pattern and determined nobody shall find it. But myself. Life is much more exciting now than it used to be. You see, I have something more to expect. 
to look forward to, to watch. I'm really ready to eat better. I am more quiet than I was. John is pleased to see me improve. He laughed a little the other day. Said I seem to be flourishing in spite of my wallpaper. I turned it off with a laugh. I had no intention of telling me it was because of wallpaper. He would make fun of me. He might even want to take me away. I don't want to leave now. Until I find out, find out. There's a week more. I think that will be enough. I'm feeling ever so much better. I don't sleep at night. For it's so interesting to watch developments. I sleep a good deal in the daytime. The daytime is tiresome and perplexing. There's always new shoots of fungus and new shades of yellow all over it. I can't keep counting them. Though I've had tried conscientiously. Strange as yellow, that book the wallpaper. It makes me think of all the yellow things I ever saw, not the usual. Ones like buttercup, but the old, old, foul, bad yellow things. But there is something else about the paper, the smell. And there's a moment it came into the room, but so much air and sun is not bad. But now we have a reek of fog and rain. Whether the windows are open or not, the smell is here. It creeps all over the house. I find it hovering in the bar, dining room, skulking in the parlour, hiding in the hall, lying in wait for me on the stairs. It gets into my hair. Even when I go for to ride, if I turn my head suddenly to surprise it, there is a sm- smell, such so a peculiar odour. Too, I spent hours in trying to analyse it, find what it smelled like. It is not bad at first, and very gentle, quite the subtlest, most enduring odour I ever met. It is a damp weather. It's, in this damp awful weather, it's awful. I wake up at night and find it hanging over me. I used this to disturb me at first. I thought seriously, burning house. To the reach, reach the smell. But now I'm used to it. Anything I can do to the, think of that is like the colour of the paper. A yellow smell. There's a very funny mark on this wall. Low down near the boat board. A streak that runs around the room. It goes behind every piece of furniture, except the bed, a long, straight, even smooch, as if it had been rubbed over and over. I wonder how it was done, and who did it, what they did it for, round and round and round and round and round and round. And round. It makes me dizzy. Really, have discovered something at last. Watch, through watching so much at night, when it changes, I finally found out. The front pattern does not move, and no wonder, the woman behind it shakes it. Sometimes I think there are a great many women behind, and sometimes only one. She calls around fast, she's calling, and shakes it all over. In the very bright spots, of the, she keeps still. In the very shady spots, she takes hold of the bars and shakes him hard. She's all the time trying to climb through, but there's nobody climbing through that pattern. It strangles so, I think. That is why I have so many heads. Why well, it has so many heads. They get through, and when a pattern strangles them off, it turns them upside down and makes their eyes white. If their heads are covered or taken off, it would be only half so bad. I think that woman gets out in the daytime. I'll tell you why, probably. I've seen her. I've seen her out in every one of my windows. It's the same woman I know. She's always creepy. Most, most women do not creep. By daylight, I see her on that long road under the trees, creeping along. When her carriage comes, she hides under the blackberry vines. Do I blame her a bit? It must be very animating to be caught creeping by daylight. I always lock the door when I sleep, creep by daylight. I didn't do it at night, for I knew John would suspect something at once. John is so queer now. I don't want to irritate him. I wish he would take, would take another room besides. I don't want anybody to get that woman out of the night. But myself, I often wonder if I could see her out of the window at once. But I turn as fast as I can. I only see her out, uh, out of one at a time. One time, I always see her. She's maybe able to creep faster than I can turn. I watch her sometimes walk away off the open country, creeping as fast as a cloud shadow in a wide wind. But only top pattern could be go be gotten off that dot from the under one. I mean to try it little by little. I found out another funny thing. I shan't tell it this time. Do not do not trust people too much. 
There's only two more days to get his people off. I believe John is beginning to notice. I don't like the look in his eyes. I heard him ask Jenny a lot of professional questions about me. He had a very good report to give. She said I slept a good deal in the daylight. John knows I don't sleep very well at night. For all I, for all I am so quiet. He asked me all sorts of questions too and pretended to be very loving and kind if I couldn't see through him. Still, I don't wonder he acts so, sleeping under this paper for three months. It only interests me, but I feel sure John and Jenny are secretly affected by it. Hurrah! It's the last day, that, but it isn't enough. John's to stay in town overnight and won't be out until this evening. Jenny wanted to sleep with me, the sly thing. I told her I should undoubtedly rest better for a night all alone. That was clever, for I really wasn't alone a bit. As soon as the moonlight and the, that poor thing began to crawl and shake the pattern, I got up and ran to help her. I pulled and she shook. I shook and she pulled. For a morning we peeled off yards of that paper, a strip as high as my head, half around the moon room. And when the moon sun came and the awful pattern began to laugh at me, I declared I would finish it today. We go away tomorrow and they're all moving, they're all moving all my furniture down again. To leave things as they were before. Jenny looked at the wall in amazement, but I could told her merrily. I did it out of pure spite, the vicious thing. She laughed and said, She didn't mind doing it, wouldn't mind doing it herself, but I must not get tired. How she betrayed herself that time. But I'm here, no person touches paper, not but me, not alive. She tried to get me out of the room, but it too patient, I was too patient. I said it was so quiet and empty and clean now, but I believed I would lie down again and sleep what I could, not wake up even for dinner. I would call when I awoke. She now she's gone, the servants are gone, the things are gone. There is nothing left but the great bedstead. Nailed down with a great hammer's mattress we found on it. We shall sleep downstairs tonight and get, take the boat tomorrow, home tomorrow. I quite enjoy the room. Now it's bare again. How those children did tear about the here. This bedstead is pretty gnawed, but I must get to work. I've locked the door and thrown the key down the kitchen path. I don't want to go out. I don't want to have anyone come in till John comes. I want to admonish him. I got a rope up here, and even Jenny didn't find. If that woman does go out, I get, it tries to get away. I can tie her, but I forgot I could not reach her far without anything to stand on. This bed is not on, does not move. I tried to lift and push it until I was lame. lame. When I was so angry, I bit off a little piece of one corner, but it hurt my teeth. I peeled off, uh, off the paper, enjoy standing on the floor. It sticks horribly. The pattern just enjoys it. All those strangled heads and booberous eyes, woolly focus grows, just shrieks of derision. I get it angry enough to be, be something to do something desperate, to jump out a window, that and it be a marvel exercise, but bars are too strong even to try. Besides, I wouldn't do it. Of course not. I know well enough what a step like that is improper and must be misconstrued. Might be misconstrued. I don't want, like, like to be locked down the window even. There are so many of those creeping women, they creep so far, so I wonder... They come out of the wallpapers as I did. But I said, but I seek her faster now by a well hidden rope. They can't get me out in the road here. I suppose I shall have to get back behind the pattern. It becomes light and it's hard. It's a pleasure to get me out of this great room. Keep your hands up, please. I don't want to go outside. I, I won't. Even Jenny, even if Jenny asked me to. But outside you have to creep on the ground and everything is green instead of yellow. But here I can creep smoothly on the floor. The shoulder just fits in a long smooch behind the wall. So I cannot lose my way. Why? There's, there's Johnny at the door. It's no use, young man. Can't open it. How he f- does call and pound. There's crying for an axe. It must be a shame to break down that beautiful door. John, dear, said I, with a grinish voice. Key down the front steps under plantain in leaf. They maintain leaf. They silence him for a few moments. They said very sh- 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 quietly, Open the door, my darling. I can't, I said. The key's down by the front door and a plain leaf. 
But I said it again several times, very gently and softly. Said it so often that he had to go and see. He got to the course and came in. He stepped close by, short by the door. What's the matter? He cried. For God's sake, what are you doing? I kept on creeping and just the same. I looked at him over my shoulder. I got out of it at last, said I. In spite of you and Jenny, I pulled it off. Well, there's a people. So you're gonna, you can't put me back. But now, where? Would I have a man? No, but now why should the man have fainted? But he did. Right across my path by the wall. So I had to creep over him every time.